Jurassic. Okay, everybody, Dr. O. In this video, we're going to talk about ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. So it's pretty quick to describe it. So you're going to see throughout these metabolism videos, I'm going to try to give examples of why they're significant, maybe in the real world, right? Because you always want wonder, why do I have to know metabolic pathways, ATP production, etc.? So of course we need ATP, but well, we'll start there. So adenosine triphosphate, like the name it, it implies, it's actually built from a ribose with an adenine, a nucleotide. That's where the adenosine comes from. And there are three phosphates, adenosine triphosphate. Phosphate. But as you can see here, you can also have adenosine monophosphate and adenosine diphosphate. So we usually talk about the last two. We usually talk about ADP or adenosine diphosphate being used energy, right? We spent it and it has to now be recycled into ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And that's fine. But the first thing you might ask is why there's so much energy here? Um, the number one energy source in your body is those two red lines there. The, the unstable or high energy bonds that hold that third phosphate phosphate onto ATP, but then also the one that holds the second phosphate onto ADP. We don't talk about that as much, but we will here in just a moment. But let's just talk about ATP for now. As the third phosphate is removed from ATP, it's going to the phosphate's going to be needed too, but it's also going to transfer its energy. So think about ATP has this energy and it can hand it off, it can give it away to some metabolic pathway, some metabolic process. That's how ATP works. So, but the phosphates are needed too. So they, 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 might, they might be needed in, in some sort of pumping mechanism or all throughout the body, but they're not wasted. And, and if they aren't needed, then they're, then they're going to be recycled as you turn ADP back into ATP, which is, the, which is the function of our entire cellular respiration system. But that second phosphate can also pop off. And if, so if you're in a state of very low energy where you're using up ATP faster than you can make it, you will start to turn ADP into AMP or adenosine monophosphate. And the reason that's important is because adenosine monophosphate, or more importantly, something called AMPK, adenosine monophosphate kinase, is an enzyme that's basically a fuel gauge. So if your body starts to see way too much AMP around, it turns on this enzyme that basically says, okay, we need to, we need to stop making uh, glucose, we need to um, stop making cholesterol, stop making triglycerides, we, ha we have to stop making stuff because we're running out of fuel, we ha and we have to burn fat. So this AMP kinase basically says it makes your cells more sensitive to insulin, which is why it's actually activated by the drug metformin. So metformin is a very common um, hypoglycemic drug that you'd give to a type 2 diabetic. Well, the reason it works is it fools the body into thinking you're in this starvation mode, which makes insulin more sensitive. So, so hopefully it should bring blood glucose levels down. It also tells the body, let's burn fat for fuel. We got all these fuel stores. Let's use them. But, and again, this is, this could be a topic for another day, but this is also why AMP kinase as this fuel gauge activates um, fasting mechanisms. So a lot of the health benefits of fasting appear to come from this, from, from this loss of energy that, that, that occurs if you're not eating. Um, what else? It'll lead, it'll lead to recycling processes in the body called autophagy. It'll lead to the cleaning up of old proteins and old cells you don't need, like apoptosis, as well as this autophagy process. So as you can see, uh, people are talking a lot about when we should eat, um, should we fast, these kind of things. Well, the health benefits actually come from this, right? You see right here, AMP, adenosine monophosphate. So just want to know that this stuff is significant. You might, you might have to understand the, the um, the biochemistry behind it, but if you have type 2 diabetic patients taking metformin, well, you now know that it's it's using this, this metabolic process, uh, and then the same thing with the health benefits of fasting. So I'm not going to ask you to know it now. I just want you to see why it, it, why it does matter, why you do have to know this stuff. So here we see ATP becoming ADP. So we said ATP was our, our primary energy currency. As ATP releases that third phosphate and releases that energy that was in that bond, that's what allows it to do work. And then it becomes ADP. Then when we have more energy, we can, we can use that energy in our electron transport system to take ADP and attach, reattach that third phosphate, making ATP. And this happens constantly. Now, in the unit on muscle metabolism, I'll, I'll also show you where um, something called creatine phosphate comes into play, but I don't want to overwhelm you um, right now. Okay, so that is ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and then just a few interesting things about it. Uh, hopefully, you at least appreciate it a little bit more than you did a few minutes ago. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.